Welcome back to Brush Up Your Game, and today uh, Tristan has joined me for our top 10 captains, Klingon captains, that is. And uh, Tristan, I, I gotta say that in making this list, I came up with a short list uh, pretty quickly of 12. Okay. And, uh, and from there... Uh, it actually wasn't that difficult to get down to 10. Which, again, surprised me because I I did not expect for this list to be that easy. Um, now, I should note, these are non-Dahar Master Klingon captains. So we removed Kor and Kang and Koloth. Mm -hmm. and I think if you put them in, probably half the list would be them. So that's why they were removed. Yeah, definitely. I think that was the, the, we originally talked about doing like a top 15 Klingon captains. And I joked like, well, half of them is going to be Dahar masters. So um, is that really, is that really fair to the rest of them? No. no yeah. I mean, not. I feel like I had maybe a harder time here. And I, I think, you know, we d discussed uh, a little bit in the last video, how there's kind of a, you know, there's a, there's a pre blood oath Klingon, uh, faction and there's kind of a post blood oath and for me you know coming into the game when I did that was like one of the first factions I picked up was blood oath and, oh, okay. and I've I've run Dahar Masters quite a bit so um, you know kind of reevaluating some of these captains in, in light of that it, you know I, I think uh, I, I'm curious to see I, I have a feeling we're going to have some very different lists here probably um, but uh, see see how it shakes out okay so, uh, my number 10, if uh, TTS will work, and there we go. Uh, my number 10 is Duras, the original Duras. Uh, I believe this was Reinforcement Booster D Duras. Uh, being able to discard any number of your upgrades to gain plus one attack die for each upgrade discarded with this ability for that attack. You have to remember, this card came out pre-Rule of Three. Mm -hmm. And and people found crazy ways to get like uh, as many followers of Khan as they owned on Duras's ship, uh, and you could throw about ten of them out the airlock for ten extra attack dice. <laughs> uh, that being said, under rule of three, I still think this is an interesting captain. Uh, the idea of Duros thematically going, well, what do we have? Throw it out. Uh, and getting more attack power for that uh, feels like Duros. Uh, he's willing to sacrifice anyone, anything to accomplish his goal. And uh, to me, it, it feels right. And, and I, I find the ability intriguing. Um, I like that it doesn't come with any other downside, whereas so many of these captains are action or disable plot for this kind of effect so um, i like it i don't love it it's number 10 but if nothing else i knew i had to tell the old stories so uh, this version of duros can sit here at number 10 for me he he uh, i have experimented with a house of duros build and i've put this put him on the Koskari. And uh, basically exploited a bunch of, uh, I think I had to cross faction some torpedo bays and repurpose cargo hold, just basically just to, to, to generate a bunch of cheap cards for the same effect, where you just discard, discard. And then with uh, Koskari is nice because it's uh, when you're attacking, most of the time you're going to generate some equality and stuff, stealing battle stations and things like that. So, yeah, I think there's still something there for him in the, uh, in the current game. Okay. Uh, but yeah, I can't. I can't say I've, I've seen him run uh, anywhere that I that I'm aware of. So, but interesting idea. I have I have Curla here. There's not Klingons don't have a ton of kind of cheap captains, um, and Klingons probably aren't known for defense. But I, it, and it, on the face of it, this ability doesn't sound super awesome, right? Because you gotta give up two year defense dice to add and evade. But when you think about it, I mean. Defense dice, I think, like, for every die, there's, like, a 37.5% chance of rolling an evade. Yep. If you consider two of them together, I think mathematically it's, like, a two-thirds chance. So you do have a better outcome by giving up two of those dice 
four and evade right off the bat, you know, as far as I'm concerned, if you're cloaked. Then you still have three dice left over. There's a pretty good chance you're going to roll at least one more evade. You got clean cloaking device. Um, I, I just think there's something there for two points, um, you know, uh, to, to play a little more of a defensive hand. Uh, I think it'd be really interesting on, on a cavort, oddly enough, because with some of the new Alliance cards, you have some defensive cavort stuff like the oh, yeah. operations officer. Um, evasive maneuvers, uh, you know, he doesn't have an elite talent slot, unfortunately, but you can put him on like the Caraga with operations officer. Now you're, you have one guaranteed evade, plus you're still throw, throwing five defense dice. There's, maybe there's something there. I don't know. Maybe, um, but, I, enough yeah. that it intrigues me. Yeah. I mean, for, for two points, uh, I mean, I think uh, you know, you're throwing, throwing him on like a, a Burrell, you know, to, to maybe save that uh, ship. I don't know. Uh, I, I think it's worth a, worth a shot. Yeah, it's more the way I, I roll defense dice. It's terrible. So this is highly intriguing to me. Yeah. Uh, not on my list, but still intriguing. Uh, maybe I should like it more. Uh, all right, my number nine, and, and this should maybe tell you some of the depth that Klingons have. Uh, 2017 starter Lursa, uh, not the flip side of, mm-hmm. of Betor, but Lursa. Uh, when attacking, if the ship is cloaked, you roll one extra attack die. It's like, hey, that's that's not a bad ability. It's not no. something that like amazes me. And the downside is she's skill four. Yeah, and, and no elite three talent points. Plot. And yeah, and like you said, no elite talent slot. So she's a little expensive, but I do like the passive ability. You know, if you're cloaked, you get an extra attack die. You could stick her on like the Vorn. Uh, I think it's the Vorn that gets extra attack dice while cloaked yep. at range. Yep. So then you're doubling up on wanting to be cloaked and doing that kind of stuff. It, she's not bad. Um, and I'll take stuff that's not bad, does an interesting thing at least gets you more dice call it a good day yeah and it's uh, kind of unique you, you got a, a double-sided card and you get to basically choose every round which side you want obviously Baytor doesn't get used very much but again there, there's something there for a defensive clan build you get uh-huh. those two two defense dice which is pretty pretty generous so yeah uh, she's on my list a little bit higher up here so yeah yeah uh Cargan, uh, yeah, Cargan's interesting. I feel like what he's really lacking is an elite talent slot for this this price point, honestly. Yeah. Because uh, I would love to have put uh, fight with is it fight with honor from the alliance pack. Uh, I want to put that on, on every Klingon. That's not the hard master, honestly. Uh, but um, I, you know, I, the ability if you can make it work, it's you know you're getting a, a free target lock. Uh, and then I think what really elevates Cargan now is Chitarg from the blood oath pack because he can eat that ox token to keep your, your cloak up. So if you're in a position where you're getting ready to attack somebody, you can keep that cloak going. So that saves you an action. You can get a target lock. Plus you're getting something else going on with, with a, a upgrade on, on your action. Uh, downside is, you know, trying to think Klingon uh, upgrades. Most of the time, if you're performing an action, it's going to be on a Klingon crew. Um, so, you know, you're kind of limiting yourself to uh, ships that have, Two crew, and uh, as we've as I've mentioned before, anyway, Klingon ships sometimes lack that that second crew slot, especially Cargan's own ship, the Pa, only has one crew, so it doesn't really work too well there. Right. But uh, yeah, I think uh, I, th- I think he's I think he can be fun. He's not amazing, but he's always a guy I consider when when building a Klingon fleet. Yeah, and he's interesting with like a Drex, where you can yes. use Drex's action, get that battle station, yep. essentially battle station action plus target yeah. lock. Um, it's not bad. Um, I, I've kind of come around on Cargan. Uh, I really didn't like him. I like him better now. Uh, just I think it's because there's more crew with actions on them that mm-hmm. are worthwhile in the Klingon faction. Um, so Cargan's my number eight, um, which is why we're, we're where we are. Um, and I, again, even if you don't have the way to, to eat the ox power, Klingons are still maneuverable enough that really all you're doing is taking away your ability to do a, a, a come about and you, know, you got enough green that you're not super telegraphing your move. And I'm, I'm okay with that. Yeah. Yeah. I like them. Um, I got to eight here, the albino. Uh, I, I've, I've never, I've never quite understood if he actually is supposed to be a, a Klingon or if he's some other random alien. 
Um, I, w- I always assumed that he wasn't Klingon, um, at least watching the the DS9 initially. So, but he's Klingon here, so I have him included. Uh, he's got a great little set of abilities, right? You get uh, some additional attack die with uh, when facing Klingon ships or Klingon captains. Uh, the, when you do damage to your opponent uh, once per game, you can discard, and you get to discard. You get to choose which crew gets discarded, which is nice. Mm-hmm. And then once per game, you can activate last, which can be really useful as well. Uh, I think he combines really well with his own ship. The Co- I think it's his ship, I guess, the Koskari, because that's also a dual uh, independent Klingon uh, ship in, in Blood Oath. Because yeah, for 20 so. points, yeah, I mean, so for 20 points, you get a, a Burrell that's got some pretty neat abilities that synergize well with the Albino, and then you get all these crazy other abilities. Uh, you know, two out of the three or once per game. The third one's pretty conditional, which is why he's not higher on the list. But uh, I think it can be a lot of fun. Yeah. Uh, the Albino, much higher on my list. Yeah, we'll get there. Sure. Uh, yeah, I was, I was shocked to see it that low. I was like, wait, what are you doing? He's just, it's, uh, you know, it's one-off stuff, I guess. I don't know. Okay. Uh, so my number seven is Worf. Uh, skill five, reroll Worf. This is... Uh, I'm trying to remember when this came out. Negvar ish time? Uh, no, later than that. No, I think he's he's on he's on Karaga. No, not the Karaga. He's on um yeah, I think he's with the Karaga. I think he, yeah, he came out you with the Yeah. So Karaga Wharf, that that's yeah. Uh so just when attacking, you can reroll all your blank results one time. Uh downside is they're just blanks. Uh yeah. and he doesn't have a talent slot. And yeah. um, I think nowadays you just want the talent slot out of them. Um, I still like the ability. I just really like, what is it, six more captains better. And uh, But this Worf definitely still has a place in the game. Uh, as, and he is, I mean, this is the spoilers, he is my favorite Klingon Captain Worf. Yeah, uh, the dual faction one is a much better federation, Captain Worf. He, yeah, the dual faction guy. Uh, he's next to useless in the Klingon build. Yeah, uh, you yeah. have to combine with Admiral Gowron. Uh, to make That's pretty much it. Yeah, or, or put him on a Devul. Yeah, yeah, and, and too limited. So no, this this if you want a a, a Worf to be a Klingon captain, this is your Worf. Yeah. Uh, yeah. They chose the wrong picture. They needed him in when he was serving on a Klingon ship in Klingon uniform. But uh, yeah, yeah. Well, luckily it's pretty it's pretty obscured. You can, we we you digress. Know. Yeah, anyway. Uh I got, got the uh, dual Lursa Bator here. Uh, I mean it's just it you know just nice. Uh probably, you know, I, I so often I would love this card to have a elite talent slot. Uh, again I think it would combine really well with the new fight with honor. Um, or cunning, for that matter. Um, cunning would but, make you know, thematic sense. Yeah, yeah. If I would honor, not so much. Uh, but but cunning would be nice. Um, but yeah, I mean, plus one attack die. You're almost always going to be cloaked. Um, and then if you really need to run and hide, you can flip it over to Baytor. Um, for, th- for three points, it's pretty solid. I, I think Jerry has a Vorn build with this captain that he likes quite a bit. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. Yeah, I mean, this Lurse is just really good. I, I like it. Um, shows that even stuff from 2017 starter has still held up nicely. Yeah. Um, let's see. 2016. Uh, I went with the captain version of Admiral. Mm-hmm. No, sorry. I'm getting ahead of myself. Uh, this is, uh, I think this is the Nagvar Gowron captain. Um, yeah. All he's missing is a talent slot, but the action here was the cornerstone of Klingon builds for years. Mm-hmm. Uh, being able to action give all other friendly Klingon ships an extra attack die made Klingons, which were already potent offensively, even more potent. And it let him kind of hang back, play a little bit of a support role, which you don't necessarily feel a chancellor should do, but eh, hey. Um, and Gowron plus Denatra was loads of fun yeah. uh, to give all kinds of ships, all kinds of dice. Uh, and I still find him interesting because Klingon ships are typically not maxing out rule of three. This is an action. It kind of 
hurts. It slows you down on your economy a bit. But if you have a, a swarm build and you have the four points to spare, I know those are antithetical ideas, but if those things exist, Gowron's really not a bad captain for it. Um, yeah, he doesn't help for Disruptor Sweep because it is just one die on yeah. one attack. But uh, if you're making singular attacks, it, it's going to work. Yeah, he's, he's, he's definitely on my list uh, a little bit higher up here, for sure. Yeah. I got the other version of Lursa. This is from the Terrell Organized uh, Play Pack, I believe. Uh -huh. um, and this is the one, I mean, it's got the Elite Talent slot. Uh, so that's great. Same price point. Uh, I mean, free action. Uh, free Cloak or free Sensor Echo. Yep. That's great. Um, you know, really to maximize it, you know, you, you want to pair it with the Baytor that comes in the same pack. Fortunately, it gets, uh, gets hit a little bit by rule of three, so you don't get the eight skill captain anymore. It just becomes a seven, which is still isn't too shabby. Uh, but you know, the other Baytor kind of suffers. Her ability is interesting. It's uh, You can uh, share her elite talent ability with another ship within range, I believe. And there's a few elite talents that, that I, I think might uh, be interesting for that. But in, the Klingons don't have a, a amazing set of elites beyond the Harmaster that where I, I want to use that on a regular basis. So I think still running Lursa by herself here is fine just because, you know, you always want to try to guarantee the ability to recloak or to get that sensor echo. And then you still have the option of pulling another action for some quality somewhere else. So, Yeah, yeah a little higher on my list, but um, definitely good captain pick. Um my number five is what I was alluding to, the captain version of Admiral Gowron, um, which might be a slight cheat, but I'm, I'm running with it here. Because uh, I think captain versions of admirals are, are great, even when they say the exact same text. Uh, mm -hmm. And to give Klingons access to battle stations uh, is so important. They don't have a lot of ways to get battle stations. And here, uh, he as long as you put him on a Klingon ship, you get an additional action from your action bar as a free action. So he's kind of a, a Picard, uh, except he can cloak or he can echo, mm -hmm. uh, which is all the better. And he's three points. Yeah. With a talent slot. Three points three. I mean, he's only skill five, but that's a lot. There's a lot to like with what he brings to the table and I might even be short changing him at, at number five, but I, I think that as good of an admiral as he is, and, and he might still arguably be the best Klingon admiral. Um, I think he's a very undervalued captain and people should look more at him as a captain. So you're going to think I'm crazy, but I don't have him on my list. Oh, you're crazy. And, I, and, and I'll tell you why. Because mm. the ability is great. Um, but anytime I look at this card and I'm building a Klingon build, I, I just can't justify putting him as a captain when I can place him as an Amrol alongside the Har Master or alongside the higher skill Klingon captain. Because the, the, there, there isn't any other Klingon Amrol I want to run. Um, so, I mean, why, why would I want to run a five skill Klingon captain when I can put him on a 11 skill core and give core another crazy action that he probably doesn't need, but and then as an Emerald, he can, he can give that action to anybody else within range. Oh, so I, I just, I, I get, yeah, that. I just can't justify him as a captain. Um, and that, that's why he's not on my list. Fair. Again, I disagree, but fair. Right. Uh, that, that, that's why we're here. <laughs> Um, I got uh, I got the Captain Gowron here, uh, highest skilled, highest natural skilled captain, Klingon captain, I believe at nine. Yeah. Uh, maybe a little pricey, uh, but I mean the action kind of mimics uh, the other Captain Gowron, who's also on my list yeah. here. Uh, plus one attack die, and you can reroll one of their attack die. Downside is it's at range one, so you really have to be comfortable flying in formation. But if you're going to build a swarm build, um, and then also the captains have to have lower captain skills, so you're probably not going to run him with the Har Masters or something like that. But uh, if you're going to run a cheap swarm build, 
I think this this is you know a captain that you're going to want, especially if you're going to do a Klingon pure swarm build. Him and and Galron, uh, I've I've run them both in a, a five Katinga build, um, all with reinforced hull, and it was a lot of fun um, to to really bump up those those attack values. Uh, I I don't know. Not on my list. Not not uh-huh. the Martok I've ever found value in. I'll. I mean, I get it. I, I do understand. Um, yeah, so my number four, I guess this is our repeat number. Um, yeah, we're we're mirroring each other six here. There you go. Um, yeah, so Lursa, the, give me the, the free uh, Echo or, or uh, Cloak. Um, same way that, oh, who's the Romulan captain that does similar things? Uh, well, I know Char- Charvenek does that, right? Yeah, it's a, a bit of Charvenek, a bit of Laris. Um, yeah, a yeah. cheaper, lower skill, but just good stuff. And yeah, you, you probably don't even want Bator as a crew to go on here. Um, I feel like this should be grandfathered in on the skill boost, and you should be able to go up to eight. Um, but you know, you're splitting hairs at that point. Um, I just, I, I like, I like being able to get free echoes and free cloaks. I, I think, uh, you can slaughter in right with the Dahar masters and you're yeah. going to keep up, which is fantastic. Yeah. I mean, she's a, you, you, she's kind of, you know, when I want some free actions, you know, her Galron and the Dahar masters are, yes. are really where to look for, for Klingons. So, yeah. And, and, and she fits the theme and, and this was um, Lursa was one of the the captains that I sat there years ago, and I went, she's thematic, and she's good, and it shows what game design that cares about source material in this game can do. Uh, because it wasn't about just making a thematic card that that was garbage. Uh, and it wasn't just about making a, a crunchy card that had no theme behind it. It was marrying the two together to make something that was awesome but not broken. And uh, I think Lursa was one of the very early gold standards of what could be done in that regard. I'm not yeah, sure I said it... that on camera. So. Yeah. Unfortunately, in, in a pack that's hard to acquire and doesn't have much else value beyond beyond her. But. Well, yeah, there was that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, but uh, worth 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 seeking out if you can find it. Um, I got the the Captain Gowron that gives everyone plus one again. Uh, Klingon swarm build, kind of a, a classic Klingon strategy. Um, pretty much essential for that to to boost those those barrels up to a five or katingas up to a five or vultures up to six whatever you want to do. Um, only downside, you know, uh, only only can affect Klingon ships. Um, and then you know you gotta you gotta worry about you know uh, you're spending your action where you're gonna gonna pick up some quality somewhere else. But again, I think him and Martok together, uh, you know, six attack barrels are, are, are not not so not too shabby. Uh, maybe put Kempex attack cruiser in there to give everyone a battle station and, and you're, you're good to go. Or if you want a cross faction, uh, Picard from the 2017 pack is a good choice too. So mm, yeah. Um, yeah, like that. Yeah. All right. And now the top three, as I ruin my number three here. All right. Uh, my number three is Chang and I'm, I'm hoping he's higher on your list. But uh, yep, he's uh, just a touch. Yeah, yeah. So uh, Chang for me, whilst I've never been the biggest fan of Chang, uh, I, I love the character. I'm not saying that. I'm saying in the game. Um, and I think it's because I, I dislike being limited to the one maneuver. Now, I love mm-hmm. that it's a free action. I love that I can still do a normal sensor echo action. And I've yet to run Chang maybe with the Romulan cloaking device where I can do a one and I can echo in some other way. And I could do this on the Alpha Hunter and also get an additional one sensor echo. 
if that all legally works. And I don't quote me that it does. But I think that's the most echoing you can do all at once. Uh, yeah, I'm not sure. Uh, yeah, I never thought about the Alpha Hunter. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and I'm sure there's other things you can do to get extra maneuvers in there and be impossible to ever predict where that ship's going to end up. But uh, Cheng can be a lot of fun. I just kind of want more, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. And that's why he just falls to number three on my list. I... I like what he does. I like that he's unpredictable. The issue for me is that I get no reward other than I maneuvered well. I don't get quality for being out of my opponent's firing arc or having them in arc yeah. the right way, that sort of thing. Cool. That's all I would even potentially want, even if it was a reroll or a passive convert or something. Uh, so that's the only thing I hold against Chang. Um, I hope someday we get a, re uh, a redo of uh, some of the motion picture movie characters, not the main heroes, but the enemies along the way, because I'd love to see what like a new Khan, a new Chang could do in the game. Yeah, I would love to see them revisit uh, motion picture one more. I mean, well, I think we're going to get definitely get some in Legacy of the Name, just not not Klingon stuff. Yeah, we're not going to get the Klingons or even the yeah. Independent to the degree that I would like. Yeah, yeah. But anyway, I digress. Chang, still um, a great captain. He is, yeah. I mean, that's why he's up here. Um, you know, I, I mean, I've, I've talked about this wharf before. I, I like this wharf. Um, yeah, he. I would love him to have an elite talent slot. Again, uh, fight with honor seems to be a natural fit with this wharf. I guess you could run Admiral Galron with him or something and, and make that happen. Um, but even on his own, I mean, three points five. Uh, you have some. You have some reroll ability. Yeah, it's only for blanks, but I, I still like having uh, putting him on a ship where maybe you know uh, being able to pull an action for for attack quality isn't. The primary goal, I, I, I put him on my uh, in my swarm build. My, if it's a Klingon pure version of it, I like putting him on Kempex attack cruiser, because Kempex has an action where you're going to give everyone else a battle station token, um, but he's not going to get one. So you still have some re, re ability there, or yeah. you can put him with with Drex, or you know again combine him with uh, Galron or something like that. To, to make it work. I mean, for three points, uh, I, I think it's fun. I, I really, really desperately wish he had an elite talent slot. I think that would, uh, would round it out nicely, but mm -hmm. yeah. Worf's kind of like the glue in a Klingon fleet. You need one more captain with a decent ability. Worf, he's there. Yeah. Worf or, or yeah, you need, you need a little bit of a uh, skill boost to your captain. There's Worf. You need to convert a bunch of blanks. There's Worf. Uh, the problem with wharf is you only can have one wharf. <laughs> yeah. Until so. we get that transporter duplication card. That'd be, that'd be fun. Uh, yeah. Don't know that that's coming, but I feel yeah, like yeah, it's yeah. a natural thing at some point is to have like the transporter accident where then you can have two versions of the same unique character. That'd be fun. Yeah. But anyway, wishful thinking. All right. Uh, do you have more about Chang you wish to talk about? Uh, yeah, I mean, I, I agree with you. The, the ability, I, 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 it's one of those things where I like it, and then when I think more about it, it's like, yeah, it, uh, but I still like it. Um, you know, it's one of those things where you have to think about, you know, where are you going to keep your cloak up, right? If you're going to attack, well, you can't use stability next round. So there's, I mean, there's a few ships. I think he obviously works really naturally with Chang's Bird of Prey, with a couple of the, uh, there's two weapon slots on there. You put the torpedoes from the Raptor pack, just two copies of that. Yeah. So you can, you're always using one. Um, and then, you know, you don't even have to spend a target lock with that one, right? Uh, you, oh. you could if you have to, but there's, so it's potential that you, you know, you, you can just, uh, you know, keep kind of feeding that. You have a permanent cloak, you get the, you get the extra sensor echo. Um, uh, you know, there, there's some stuff going on there. Um, but yeah, there, there's, you have to kind of plan to, to, to use him and, and it's not going to work all the time, which is too bad. 
Yeah, he, he just gets a little expensive. Uh, my number two is the albino. I I like I like everything that he brings. He brings so many different extra possibilities. Uh, I I think I find him best in mission scenario type play uh, because you're you know you're going to be up against Klingons in that scenario. Uh, mm-hmm. I like I like the he opened up design space for multiple different once per games. Uh, but also that you get to pick a crew to discard. That is so unique, and I hope that that design space is continued. Uh, or even repeated. I'll take a repeat of that ability. That That's just fun. Um, I, and like you said, being able to go last, helpful. If you plan for it, plot for it mm-hmm. at the right time. Uh, don't leave it until it doesn't matter, uh, but use it. And make best use of it. So, uh, yeah, I like the albino. I do think he's Klingon, just some mutant or mutate of Klingon yeah. genome. And given some of the history of Klingons and wanting to be pure and all of this, uh, it wouldn't surprise me that he was an outcast to Klingon society sort of thing. I don't know the full story. I would love to know more about the backstory of the albino. Yeah, I, I think the, the more I rewatch that episode and I, I watch it a lot because it's one of my favorite DS9 episodes. It reminds me of kind of a old school Western. Uh, oh, yeah. Magnificent Seven kind of thing. Yeah, I, I do think he probably is some sort of, you know, mutated Klingon or whatever. Uh, I'm sure there's probably a 400 page novel somewhere that that has this background. <laughs> I just don't, I'm not aware of it. Um, but uh, yeah, it's it, that, that's a great episode. A really intriguing character. And um you know, even if they leave it as is, it, it, that's fine with me. So yeah, okay. You haven't put them up there. I haven't put them up there. I have a feeling we have the same number one. There we go. Yep. Yeah, okay. we agree on something. Okay. This this makes me feel better. Yeah. Um, now I know you weren't around back in the day, but this Martok was like one of the reasons people found ways to boost Martok skill over. Picard nine and mm. get Picard a third action or run Martok and Picard and let somebody else get a second action. And then you had a bunch of actions flying all over the place before a bunch of ships could take multiple actions. And that reigns true today, except now instead of it's skill nine and eight, you're doing it at skill 12 and 11. Uh, yep. And it, the stakes just got bigger. Uh, but it's still a lot of fun. And uh, the fact that you get to pick any action to do, aside from an action you've already done, is so useful. It, it can be re-enable a, an upgrade and then actually perform the upgrade. Uh, yeah, I, I, I love this Martok. I don't pull him out as much as I, I used to, but he's still one of my go-to not just Klingon captains, but top captains in general. Yeah, he's great. I, I agree. He doesn't see nearly as much play anymore. Because, uh, again, I, the Dahar Masters have just kind of dominated the, the Klingon space uh, for, for the last couple of years. But I, I have run him, um, and he's, he's great to put with uh, Crew Wharf to, to boost him to 11. So pretty much anyone can, can get a... Uh, skill uh, get that extra action and um, yeah then the sky's the limit um, so v- super useful passive ability I love I love those you don't have to do anything mm-hmm. um, you don't have to worry about bumping or something because it's not going to affect his 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 uh, his ability to use that or someone else to use that so very very useful okay so I without taking a ton of time uh, yeah where would Martok kind of line up if you were to make, say, a top 10 of Klingon overall captains? How many Dahar Masters fit above Martok? Uh, I mean, honestly, I think he's I think he's top three. I, okay. I think you have the, the two cores, um, which, again, to, to my mind, those are both like top five, top 10 captains in the game. And then you have Martok here, which is he's also probably a, a top 10 captain in the game. 
Um, I, I, I don't think any of the Coloss or Kangs as good as their, as their abilities are just don't meet, don't, don't quite match them because this is such a, this is much more versatile, uh, than anything that they can offer because it can affect your whole fleet. He's, he's almost kind of like a, another Admiral in a way. Yeah. Um, so I, yeah, I was, I was struggling like for me, I, I think I'm with you. The, my top two core I want to think slide above him for sure. The the animated core slides yeah. above him. Um, I don't know that the Kelvin core does. I, I I know you agree, but I I feel like that's such an even line, and it just depends on what you're trying to do. Uh, like one on one mission battle, I'll take mirror core all day long. Fleet wide, and the bigger the fleet, the better Martok gets. Like two ships, I'll still take Kelvin core. Three ships, I feel like it starts to become pretty even. Four plus ships, I'm over to Martok. Sure. And, and I feel like that's my line. Um, but Martok's definitely ahead of everybody else. Uh, now, as for like number two and, and three, I don't know. I think there's a lot of Dahar Masters filling in. Yeah. Um, I. I mean, I think I think with the Dahar Masters, right, is you only can have three of them. Um, so uh, there's a lot of redundancy there. Like, um, I guess it depends on how, how you want to look at it. If you want to look at it as a head-to-head, which card is the best, you know, you, you could probably slot more Dahar Masters in, in that, that those sure. top ten slots. If you're talking about practicality, you know, which ones you're actually going to run, you know, you only can run one core, and after that, all of them kind of become su- superfluous. So... Um, you know, really depends on how, how you want to look at it. And I think it also depends upon strategy. Like if you're going to run a swarm fleet, I'm, I'm probably not going to spend 10 points to, to put a Dahar master on a, on a ship, but, uh, I will spend 10 points to put Garon and Martok on, on ships. So yeah, the, depends on how you want to run that. I get that. Yeah. The, a lot of different options. So, um, and Klingons, I, I dare say, I feel like Klingons, have a, a lot of depth in captains. They have some really good top-line captains, and then they have a, a roster of depth now. They didn't used to. Yeah, I mean, I think there's a, there's a nice array of abilities, um, depending upon what you, what you want to do. If you want to have, you know, some extra movement or, or what have you, you know, you got, you got free sensor echo free cloaks to, to make those things kind of happen. If you want to just pound your opponent with cheap high attack ships, you have, you have those options. If um, you know, if, if you want to kind of disrupt your opponent, you have things like the albino uh, that, that, that are going to play in that. Or I will even mention uh, honorable mention. I think the other version of Chang uh, has elevated its, its usefulness with the new targeting array. Oh yeah. Um, if you're, if you remember that, because that one, it's uh, you. You have an action. You spend a target lock, and then you can disable an opposing captain. Yeah. Um, so so you, you get the target array. You get those two, two targeting, uh, two target locks. And now you can you know spend that action. You don't have to disable Chang. You just got to use that that target lock. So, um, yeah, there, there's there's a lot a lot going on, and um, you know I think maybe people need to look beyond the the core Kang Koloth. Uh, uh, trio and and see what else is out there sometimes mm. well said i like it uh let's end it there uh thank you all for watching appreciate your time uh join us next week we got a fun one uh until then keep brushing up your game take care